Life-threatening conditions connected with uh, breathing are the flail chest, open pneumothorax, tension, pneumothorax, massive hemothorax, and circumferential burns of the chest in the case of full thickness burns and also the paralysis of the respiratory muscles, uh, intercostal muscles and, and diaphragm in patients with spinal cord injury. Those are the most, let's say, important life-threatening conditions concerning with uh, with B, with, uh, with breathing. Uh, when it comes to flail chest and it's part of physiology, so uh, we can diagnose the flail chest when there is multiple fractures of multiple ribs, so at least uh, three ribs broken in two places. So there, there has to be a kind of block part of the chest that it's, uh, uh, let's say, isolated by fractures from the less, uh, rest of the uh, of the chest, uh, bony chest structures, and uh, what uh, can be observed in uh, among those patients are uh, is the paradoxical movement of the flail segment. So during the um, the inspiration, when normally the uh, the chest cage expands, uh, the flail segment move inwards, as you can see on the on this picture. And uh, when the patient expirates, and usually the, the chest cage moves inwards, then the flail segment expands and go, goes outwards. Uh, and uh, depending on, the, um, on, on how large is this flail segment, um, and how, uh, how huge is the contusion of the lung, which is below this segment, uh, we have the different level of uh, ineffective ventilation, which might be provoked by, by this flail chest fragment. We've got uh, the pulmonary contusion, and we've got also the hyperventilation due to pain, which might be enormous among those patients. So those are the, the, the key things, ineffective ventilation, uh, pulmonary contusion and, and hyperventilation due to pain which uh, are responsible for the respiratory failure of, uh, of the patients with the flail chest. So the symptoms uh, which you can observe apart from the signs of contusion on, on the chest and some uh, crackling of the bone fragments on palpation, uh, there is a decreased uh, mm, respiratory mm, uh, tidal volume, dyspnea, respiratory failure, we might have uh, the patient with decreased conscious level due to hypoxia and on auscultation you would hear some uh, um, abnormal sounds on the side of on the side of trauma due to contusion to the to the lung but mainly mainly the diagnosis is done through palpation when you palpate uh, and you feel the broken ribs and uh, observing the paradoxical movement of the flail chest uh, fragment. Uh, the treatment uh, at, at the beginning when the, uh, when the ventilation is, is effective uh, we start with uh, the temporary stabilization of the bone window with uh, some external dressing so you can take the huge gas uh, and use the bandage and uh, or plaster and uh, mm, put it on the uh, on the flail fragment to prevent its uh, its movement or reduce the movement of the flail chest fragment but uh, final treatment usually mm, is um, consists of uh, um, starting the mechanical ventilation of the patient and uh, to ventilate the patient mechanically uh, you have to secure the airway so so the final treatment is intubation or using some other device to secure the airways like supraglottic device and then uh, positive pressure ventilation 
and thanks to sedation effect, pain killing effect of the drugs, um, this treatment is, is the optimal. So painkiller, sedation, myorelaxation, intubation and ventilation of the patient with the flail chest. Another life-threatening condition uh, connected with B breathing is open pneumothorax and uh, the patient with the open wound of the chest would uh, appear with dyspnea, might have respiratory failure, might have decreased level of consciousness due to hypoxia. Uh, on inspection you would see the visible chest wound and uh, um, you might also observe the asymmetric chest movement uh, of, uh, of the injured side of the patient on percussion which is quite difficult to perform pre-hospitally and in, in hospital in gloves but if you manage to procast the chest uh, in open pneumothorax you would hear the tympanic sounds while you procast and on auscultation you will have diminished sounds on the uh, on the side of the injury or no sounds on, on the side of the injury. Uh, the treatment of the, uh, of the um, open pneumothorax is the dressing with the valve mechanism and uh, um, widely used dressing is called Asherman chest seal as, as you can see on the, you can see it on the, um, uh, on the picture you have here the Heimlich valve um, which prevents the air to get into the lung from outside and enables the air to get out of the lung um, during inspiration. But the final treatment is uh, putting the chest drain, not through the wound but in the different place and, and surgical repairment of the, of the wound of the, uh, of the chest. Here you can see some improvised um, dressing uh, with a valve, so we can use the glove or some plastic bag or plastic part, a uh, medical part uh, that you can put on the wound and you can use the plaster on three sides and this free margin would work as a valve. So during the inspiration uh, the uh, the plastic bag will be, let's say, sucked inside, so it will prevent the entrance of the air from the outside, and uh, at the same time, the uh, the air would, let's say, escape during uh, during expiration. So this can be improvised in case you do not have Asherman uh, seal dressing. And the, th the third life-threatening condition that we would go through is tension pneumothorax. Uh, is much more um, dangerous than open pneumothorax and uh, it usually occurs among trauma patients patients with the chest trauma who are intubated and who receive the positive pressure ventilation uh, and, uh, um, and very often the tension pneumothorax uh, occurs during the ventilation, mechanical ventilation of the trauma patient who are in traumatic cardiac arrest. The mechanism um, of uh, building up the tension pneumothorax is uh, the laceration of the uh, of laceration of the lung and uh, with the positive pressure ventilation, let's say we iatrogenically push the air through the wound of the lung into the pleural cavity and more we ventilate more air uh, collects in the pleural cavity and at a certain point it starts to compress the lung and move the mediastinum so uh, every time you will have the trauma patient who deteriorates during ventilation you should consider one of the reasons of the deterioration of the patient the tension pneumothorax and as a matter of fact tension pneumothorax rarely 
is a complication of the open pneumothorax uh, when the chest wound would act as a one valve uh, one way valve that traps the increasing volumes of air in the pleural space during inspiration so it's rarely the open pneumothorax will change into the tension pneumothorax even if it won't be treated so remember intubation ventilated patient after chest trauma uh, among those patients the tension pneumothorax usually um, usually is is seen what's the pathophysiology of tension pneumothorax so when the air continues to get into the pleural cavity pleural space and it cannot exist it the pressure in the pleural intrapleural uh, pleural cavity rises increases to the point in which it uh, mm, provokes the collapse of the lung uh, the shift of the mediastinum and the shift of the mediastinum is very dangerous because it uh, it provokes the collapse of the uh, um, inferior vena cava it can compress the uh, the, uh, the atrium so actually it impairs the venous return to the heart and if the venous return to the heart is compressed decreased then we have hypotension and the next step it will be cardiac arrest with pulseless electrical activity due to obstructive shock so what are the, what are the symptoms of tension pneumothorax uh, which is the cause of 30% of traumatic cardiac arrest so uh, so the diagnosis should be the clinical diagnosis without any radiological uh, pictures so uh, first of all you would have a patient with the chest trauma okay in some cases during the palpation you would feel surgical emphysema on the, on the side of injury uh, which should make you think that uh, the air gets out from the from the pleural cavity so there's a huge injury of the ribs at least on auscultation you would have diminished breath sounds on the side of injury or or silence on percussion which is quite difficult to to perform pre-hospitally but on percussion you should have the tympanic sounds and uh, mm, what else mm, you might have the um, symptoms of the uh, decreased the return of venous return so distended jugular veins um, tracheal deviation is the late sign and it is seen on x-ray so actually you won't see it on the patient but you should observe the jugular veins and uh, patient with tension pneumothorax have has at least two out of those three um, three problems respiratory failure hypoxia uh, decreased level of consciousness and shock due to obstruction so obstructive shock so um, usually those three things uh, exist in the patient who has tension pneumothorax so if you've got patient with the chest trauma uh, if you cannot hear anything on auscultation on, on the side of the trauma if you feel surgical emphysema if uh, the jugular veins are distended and patient is in respiratory failure in shock and us uh, usually it is accompanying uh, with the low conscious level you should diagnose the tension pneumothorax and treat it and what's the treatment of the tension pneumothorax mm, i'll tell you in a while uh, here you can see uh, the quite so here you can see the ultrasound device in in helicopters so it can be also used for the quick diagnosis of pneumothorax. Yeah. 
as you can see it's quite uh, handy. Um, ultrasound is a good, um, good, let's say, uh, good device to um, to quickly diagnose the tension pneumothorax or any pneumothorax. So the treatment, the uh, the initial treatment might be the trochosynthesis. So needle or cannula inserted in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. Uh, just over over the third rib um, insertion of the cannula, but uh, it's not a gold standard. Actually, you you cannot you are never sure if you enter the pleural cavity. In uh, thirty to forty percent of patients with the large bore cannula, you will not get into the pleural cavity due to muscles or fat. So it's uh, it's not very effective. Uh, cannula can also king can block. So the gold standard for the tension pneumothorax treatment is the trochostomy. So making a hole in the chest wall and putting your finger into the pleural cavity to be sure that you are in the pleural cavity. So that's the gold standard final treatment of the pneumothorax, and uh, and then putting the drain. But actually, the most important thing is. Put a finger in the into the to, uh, into the hole in the chest. So making a hole in the chest trochostomy is the uh, is let's say is the most important part of the treatment of the pneumothorax. When it comes to uh, cardiac arrest due to trauma, when you suspect tension pneumothorax, you should perform trochostomy in the fourth fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. So trochostomy is the gold standard in traumatic cardiac arrest. And actually, the uh, ERC 2015 guidelines say that if uh, you've got cardiac arrest in trauma patient, and there is a chest trauma, you uh, you should perform bilateral uh, thoracostomies. So two holes in the chest, uh, one at each side. Uh, I would say that uh, if you if you're a doctor, if you examine the patient and you're sure that one side is okay and the second one is problematic, you perform one thoracostomy. Uh, actually, the guidance to perform two bilateral uh, thoracostomies uh, is, let's say, for paramedic in some crews, just to give to give them the uh, the simple way to treat the traumatic cardiac arrest. So, do not think much if there is a chest trauma performed bilateral trochostomy. If there is tension pneumothorax, you might save the life of the patient. If there is no tension pneumothorax, you just make two holes in the chest and it does not any, let's say, mm, negative effect on the patient who is in the trauma, traumatic cardiac arrest. And uh, pre hospitally you can, let's say, just when the patient is in traumatic cardiac arrest and you have the patient intubated and patient is being ventilated, you can just finish the treatment with uh, simple trochostomy, so making a hole in the chest and just uh, put some uh, Asherman dressings on both sides and go to the hospital. Uh, and in hospital you can put the drain. Why in such way? To save the time. Putting the drain takes time, you have to secure the drain in the chest so you lose um, precious minutes, which might be uh, very important for the patient who is after, uh, after trauma. So here you can see the patient who uh, has been hit by the, uh, by the tree that he was cutting. And uh, actually when we arrived, he was in the traumatic cardiac arrest with a systole so the prognosis was very poor. We did our best. We performed bilateral arctotrochostomy. So we can see here two drains in the chest, but actually the patient had had uh, assisted leave for more than 20 minutes. Um, so we I had to declare the death of this patient. But as you can see, we've got some uh, we've got also pelvic sling that we'll talk about later.